my friends we should not forget the mantra we hear the mantra and then we understand it but our attitude does not change sahana vavatu om sahana vavatu we both we bless it sahana ubhunaktu we enjoy both receiving and giving Sahaviryam karva bahe. We should have tremendous energy that goes to the intellect for understanding and absorption of the knowledge. He just we now he tamastu. We should be alert and aware to receive this knowledge. And ma vidvesha bahe. <clears throat> there should not be any envy, misunderstanding. Huh? between the teacher and the seekers. So our masters have, by this mantra, the masters have created uh, a thought process, a feeling, an emotion that I'm, for example, you know, when I'm teaching, so I have that feeling and intention and emotion inside that I'm serving my teacher. I'm serving my master through you. I'm serving my master through you. So then what happens? My attachment, my over expectations is not there. <clears throat> Some people write, I cannot pay. Okay, don't pay. Are you willing to join? Yes. And then they leave after two days. Do you see that? Don't pay. You have to understand it. So if our intention, every mantra has certain intention, feeling and emotion. If we do not extract it, we simply intellectually understand. Oh, we should not have our envy and the jealousy against each other. And after the session, you are already attached to someone and the jealousy comes. No, 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 I cannot teach you uh, if you don't pay me this. So just I'm introducing this and I will explain it later. I'm serving my master through you. <clears throat> Or you can say, if you are taking care of your children, I'm serving the Lord through my son, through my daughter, through my friend. If this change is not coming into the mind, I'm not getting out of the ignorance. I can learn it. I can do a lot of practices. Ah, no change comes. You have to be very vigilant. I'm just throwing it this understanding so that now the next thing comes that are you changing? Are you changing your behavior and attitude? So we learn everything, we study everything, all the principles, but my attitude does not change. And if the attitude does not change, the inner transformation does not take place. I remain attached. I remain envious inside. Outside, oh, yes. Oh, what a great meditation. Oh, what a thing. That fundamental change does not come. And if the fundamental change does not come, in the end, you will be frustrated. Then you will say, what happened to me? I did everything as you told me. Huh? <clears throat> but I did not change my attitude. I still have clinging to the things. <clears throat> People say, I cannot pay you many people. I said, don't pay. Will you attend the session? Yes, after two days they leave it. So you are already attached. I know it. And we continue our journey. 
<clears throat> so are you changing calmness and peace and the joy inside response, not reaction outside, change of behavior and attitude? These changes should tell you that, yes, the Eastern wisdom is helping you to bring about an inner transformation and we are moving ahead to the state of awakening and realization. What we have been doing, uh, say for the last one year, initially I started with topic title, hammering the delusion. It is still going on, but <clears throat> so we understood that how to hammer the dead delusion. It is a delusion. that I am attached to certain things in the world for seeking pleasure. So I should not have an expectation. Yes, I should have expectation. People come to me and they ask, you know, okay, I'm ready to do the session. I said, here is the challenge. So I have an expectation, but I'm not attached to it. Do I see the people who are really willing? I can, <clears throat> I can continue. So hammering the delusion is one, and from there, the delusion is caused by the ignorance, and we have to get rid of the ignorance. Do you remember the equation? If you remember the equation, your attitude must change. If the attitude is not changing, then we are, uh, we are, yes, it's better. Uh, you're not going to have a drink. You are attending the session. Even that is good. That is good. Be very clear. You all are seekers. That's why I'm talking to you. All these things. <clears throat> so equation is the happiness is equal to the desire fulfilled in the world outside divided by the sub-desires to be entertainment. Entertain. And we have been entertaining these sub-desires which caught me into the cycle of action doing this. Oh, I have to. Uh, today I have to, I have this agenda, I have to fulfill this agenda. No, I have a problem, I have to solve this problem. These problems can never be solved. <clears throat> the world itself is a problem. My master used to say the world itself is a problem. The world has no problem at all. So I, so a seeker is aware, seeker keeps it separate. Oh, this is this, some desires need to be fulfilled. I have to find out the need-based desires. Let me fulfill it. So how to separate that need-based desire and the sub-desires that further creates a cycle? So there we have to understand RTT. Do you remember RTT? No, I remember. <clears throat> so I have an imagined pleasure from the, uh, from the sense organs when I have an imagined pleasure in the food. I have an imagined pleasure in the possession. In the possession. You see, I'm linking it. Why I'm linking it, I'm going to tell you. Our goal is the inner transformation in the awakening until we understand this. So that is why I created you know, the first group, the world is suffering. I have to be constantly aware, living my life consciously with these principles to see and check if inner self has a selfishness or it has an attitude of contribution. Even I just have a mental attitude. I'm serving my master through you, what it takes to. <clears throat> I'm getting out of the delusion. You might have seen in India, we have an idol worship. Idol means stone, wood, image, picture. So are we, are we worshipping or meditating on the image, stone? No. We are worshipping that God through this image. Are you getting it? But my image again about you is different. It is full of a delusion. 
and I say we are very good friends. At last, good friends will leave. No, we have a wonderful relationship in the family. No, it, it will break. You will have difference. We are seekers. We are going deeper. <clears throat> so the first group, word is suffering. Second group, the listening and learning. I told you the satsang. Third group, I should feel the changes and experience the changes in my attitude, in my thought, in my speech, in my action. It is not that in a session I am a very goody goody. And after the session, uh, I create a ruckus in the family and the profession. No, that is not the way this Eastern wisdom works. And then only we will remember. Otherwise, you will forget the session. I can bet you. You do whatever you, you try to be extra intelligent, over intelligent, you will forget it. The way the masters have developed these sessions. So now come to the, <clears throat> we have understood pranayama, pratyahara, second practice. Viveka, the discernment is the third practice. And uh, fourth is the japa, and the fifth is the meditation. So now we will be able to understand what exactly is the meditation is the fifth practice. But in the beginning, we have understood the pranayama. <clears throat> pranayama, pratyahara, pratyahara, we have viveka, the discernment, and japa, and the meditation. Don't forget, you have to change, you have to experiment, you have to apply it in order to understand the essence of the pranayama. I gave you only one phrase and I explained it in detail. Desire is the impurity of prana in the mind. First manifestation of the prana is the mind. Now link the two. Now when you link these two, we understand if I bring about a change in the prana, the mind will have a purity. How the mind has impurity because of the thoughts associated. Every thought is associated with the objects of the world. <clears throat> I like you. I hate you. So you are an object. Oh, I like this. My house is good. I don't have house. I'm rich. I'm poor. You look at any thought is associated with an object in the world outside. But now the very expression has come from the energy. And that energy is the prana. Where the expression has taken place. The expression has taken place in the mind. Prana is the first manifestation of First manifestation of the prana is the mind. <clears throat> now I'm sitting here and keep silence. Unless I have an expression, how do you know that I'm a teacher? So the expression, but expression demands an energy. If I'm weak and have a very high fever and throat is choking, how can I say? So that, that is at the physical level. But I should have an energy to express it through the mind. If I give consciousness to that energy, it becomes the mind. Desire is the impurity of the pranayama. Pranayama, it means, purifies my mind. The final goal, the ultimate goal, the only goal. Yes, we get byproduct. You know, if you do the pranayama, you will help manage your respiratory disorders. It will help you to open the clogged nostrils. That is okay. You will be able to increase the oxygen concentration. Oh, these physiological biochemical benefits are also, we get it. But the main goal is purification of the mind. So when the mind is purified, what happens? I live in a higher level of awareness. 
what is higher level of awareness and what is lower level of awareness. Then only your mind will feel it. I'm serving ma my master. I made a statement. I serve my masters through you. Where is the problem for me? So will you be sticky, attached to seeking the money? No, but expectation is there, yes. But that expectation does not turn into craving. So you are living into higher awareness. In the same way, you know, I am, what I said, I am serving the master. It means, serving means what I give as much as possible. I don't hold. <laughs> So when you hold, you are in ignorance and delusion. When you hold, what happens? Ego comes. So what is ego? You create a limitedness. So what happens when you create a limitedness? Then you have separated yourself from the world outside. What is this? This is the problem. This is what the ignorance is. And then what happens? They ignore it. Ignorance causes the suffering. I'll be, I will be talking in detail and making you understand this the entire process. So the pranayama we have understood. Pranayama. Another beautiful, uh, this master Shankaracharya says, pranayama is the control of all the forces by realizing emptiness in, in the mind. That emptiness obviously is the mindfulness. <clears throat> you regulate all the forces expressed by the prana to reach to the state of emptiness. That is also the purification of the mind. But the best expression, I see that every time the breath, outgoing breath, you reject the multiplicity of the word that there are 10 people. All are essentially one. And when you are inhaling, you say, I am the real self. Because there is no two inside. And if that is the highest pranayama, that I will take up at a later stage after Ah, we discuss about the second group of the practice is known as a pratyahara. <clears throat> pratyahara means it is made up of two syllables. Pratya. Pratya means opposite, moving away. And ahara means the food. You look at the way these Sanskrit words are uh, created by our masters. It gives you the entire story, practice. Pratyahara, moving away, or pratya also means opposite, going against, and ahara means the food. Now the next question comes from where you are taking the food. We are taking the food into our mouth, that is one. We are taking the food of objects from the world through the sense organs. So when I move away from the objects of the world, which is causing the craving, which is causing the imagined pleasure, which is causing the projected uh, <laughs> pleasure in the pain, I move away. So there here, I is the senses. Consciously, I move away my sense organs from the food of, particular food of the sense organ. Sight is the food of the eyes, the touch is the food of the touch, sense or the skin. Smell is the food of food for, we have, I think you have understood it. Pratyahara. Now another question comes. What do you mean? I have a physical sense organ. How can you move it away? from the food. You don't have a luxury. If your eyes are open, you are seeing me. 
unless you close your eyes, you don't have a library. So what it means by moving away? We are understanding Pratyahara. So here the master says, my friends, there is a faculty of seeing is present in the physical eyes. Faculty of hearing is present in the physical ear. These, they are two things. Did you understand that? How are you getting it? Faculty of seeing, faculty of perception, faculty of touch, faculty of seeing, faculty of smelling, faculty of hearing is different from the physical sense organs. Sometimes you feel that, you know, oh, ears are so beautiful, oh, but the guy is not able to hear anything. Do you see that? Sometimes you see the eyes look bright, so bright, so good, so beautiful. But, oh, no, no, he is blind. Do you see that? Now, did you understand the process of Pratyahara? So, we are moving away the faculty of perception of each of these sense organs, moving away from the, their respective objects. Do you see? That is the practice. Now that is explained as a metaphor in our different text. And one of the most fascinating texts is the Gita. Gita says, well, like the turtle which withdraws its limbs from all sides, a seeker withdraws the senses from the sense objects, what happens? Your mind becomes steady. You have left the impurity. You have left the delusion. You are living into a higher awareness. You are calm instantly. You are in joy instantly. <laughs> That is what the pratyahara is. So ahara means the food. Food that we receive from the world in three different forms. Did I explain three different forms? One is the food into the mouth. Other is the food in terms of the objects of the senses. And third in association. We all are associated together. So you are receiving the knowledge or you are receiving the ignorance. Ah, come on. This guy, uh, Jerry and David knows, <clears throat> young guy, he does private lessons. Only 32, 33 in, uh, in US. Very tall and handsome. So in the last session, he was saying that my dad called me and asked me, what are you doing? On Friday night. Now I'm sitting here and I am listening to the talk sent to me by my teacher. And then I will be doing meditation. Oh, that's not your way. You are young. Come and join me. For a drink. And uh, his parents gave me a good lecture. And so he was sharing those experiences. I don't want to go outside. Why should I go outside? But I sometimes I feel frustrated. My friends are enjoying into the bar. You see, <clears throat> faculty of the sense organs are attracting you, but you are able to hold it. He said, you are doing the best thing you can do. So I said, why don't you play with those people who are asking you to, to, to get play with these sense objects, this kind of effort. So what is a play? Oh, if the, your dad calls, you know, I'm taking a beer at my home. I cannot drive. You know, so, so please, you know, I cannot come to you. And after having a beer, I'll sleep. 
you close all the doors. We have to do it in the beginning. Gradually, once your mind becomes stronger, you are free. Look at it. The three, three kinds of a food, associations. So your, your parent is calling you to have a beer, have a drink. That is our culture. So what we can do in U.S. <laughs> that is our culture. Uh, enjoy your life. So three types of the food. Fast food, we already know it. Second food, the objects of the senses. Third is association. Satsang is also an association. You are associated with me now. So we also get, you are getting a food in terms of the thought, in terms of the principles, in terms of uh, the experiences it can bring, in terms of our relationship, all those, the third category belongs to association, relationship, thoughts, feelings, emotions. Uh, that is the third food we receive. Now, sometimes we react, sometimes we, we are pleased, we are happy. So then the master, even though the meta, metaphor means that they are not equal to the real life examples, but they give you a pointer. Metaphor means a pointer. Otherwise, by understanding the metaphor, you can directly realize the real self. So the metaphor is, as the turtle which withdraws its limbs from all the sides. So you can have four, four legs of a turtle and one is the tail. So we have five sense organs. But I told you that you cannot withdraw these physical sense organs. There is a faculty of perception in each of these sense organs that you need to withdraw consciously from the mind. Consciously from the mind? Consciously from the mind? What do you mean by it? Understand it clearly. Now we are going into the subtle and higher practices. So if you do not understand its import clearly, uh, it will cause you a lot of challenges. The faculty of the sight is present in the physical eyes. <clears throat> what it means? <clears throat> I look at you and still I can, I do not look at you. Sometimes it happens. Isn't it? Sometimes you're looking at the wall and Ah, uh, your dad, no, 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 what, yeah, what are you staring? But your mind is, mind has taken the faculty of eyes somewhere. You have that image. Faculty of the smell, you have, oh, what a great food that I had yesterday. We will go again. Faculty of the smell and the taste. Very subtle, but very interesting. You, know, you see the beautiful uh, man, the handsome man or beautiful women. Faculty of sensuality, see that. It is the touch. Imagine sensuality causes the problem. Beautiful women does not cause any problem. <laughs> Are you getting it? Beautiful women does not cause any problem. Oh, what a beautiful car attached to it will cause a problem. So it is the faculty of sight I have to withdraw inside by consciously thinking. I will continue this journey of Pratyahara to understand it slowly. So another meaning of the Pratyahara, uh, if you understand in that way, it says, one of the Upanishad. Upanishad are the cream text. You understand a select Upanishad, you are already realized. The Upanishads are the topmost of the text. Oh, today I will buy all the Upanishads. Don't buy it. 
you will not understand everything, anything. There, there we are approaching, step by step we are approaching. <clears throat> the first uh, category is the Upanishad, cream text. Second is the Sutra. Uh, there are many Sutras. Yoga Sutra is one, but Yoga Sutra is at a... Uh, Yoga Sutra is also good, if you understand it clearly. But there is another Brahma Sutra, which gives you the logical answers of all the doubts. It gives you the intellectual conviction. And the third category is the Gita. So what we are studying, we are in the fourth category. We are understanding the basic principles. So that when we study, the, when we study those Upanishads, so in one of the Upanishads, it says the Pratyahara is the involved, tuned state of the mind. I'm using the word inward, and it is tuned inward. You are living in the world outside. You go and meet people, and you go and buy everything. You go to the store, you visit, you drive, you do everything in the world. But inward, tuned state of the mind. Inward tuned state of the mind. So I'm leaving you here to think about it, what it means by inward, tuned. Tuning is there. It is always tuned inward. So masters, great masters, they have, they have that clarity and they have the state of the awareness which is inward, tuned. So when it is involved tuned, that nothing can disturb them, their peace. They can go to the bar. They can go anywhere, I tell you. They can go anywhere. It has nothing to do with... Are you getting it? That is another beautiful definition. So think of it and contemplate. We will use we will understand that what is this inward tuning. Close your eyes. Let us go for the practice. Eyes are closed. Now do you understand eyes are closed and still the mind creates and imagined objects that we see even after the eyes are closed. We hear, we smell, etc., etc., etc. So that is why we have already achieved that level of the perfection. Your place, position, and the posture is clear, and then you are comfortable. Comfortable also helps you to uh, do the pratyahara at the initial stages. And I have explained you in more than 50 different ways what it means by being comfortable then being carefree. So I said conscious thinking is required and so we have a Mangala Charan Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Swastir May there be happiness for all. Did, do you really understand? Now we understand the Pratyahara is coming first. Then we are ready for a Mangala Charan to get absorbed. So we are putting all these practices into an order as per the teachings of the Eastern wisdom so that we can reach to that state. <clears throat> May there be happiness for all souls. Where you are looking for happiness, inside me. Happiness is my essential nature. It is, is it the inward tuning? So one is Mangalacharan, one is the mantra, and other is the inward tuning. So both the practices are together. Sarvesham, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu, may there be peace for all, peace for all. Do you see the inward tuning or do you see the mind is still running outside 
with an imagined perception of the objects of the senses. You are translating what you have learned into practice. And if you don't do that, your intellect will say, oh, you have understood, the mind will not change. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu May there be completeness in all, wholeness, completeness. So the message is clear. The mind is not running after any object in the world through the sense organs. Why? Because I'm complete in myself. You see, in every session I explain you the different meaning. And the, all these meanings and understanding comes from the teachings of the Upanishad. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Mangalam Bhavatu May there be auspiciousness for us. So when there is a calmness and the joy, you are looking inside a sense of completeness there is always, in, in that moment of auspiciousness means gratitude. Where is the opposite of gratitude? For the sake of understanding, not a synonym and antonym. Opposite of gratitude that I have broken the limited consciousness created by the mind since birth, which is obsessed with the body-mind complex, which says, I'm, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. And in that state, look inside the forehead in the space, stillness in the body, and drop on Shanti, Gently there and start breathing quick and fast breath into the chest, through the nostrils. Just continue. Endurance, you have already learned it because then I will also not talk about this practice. You continue breathing and the mind is objecting on a given day, it will object on a given day. Mostly what will happen, you will enjoy the practice. You will say, okay, oh, mind, you have learned it consciously. But if on a given day, if you have any challenges, you endure it. How you endure it? The intellect says I have to continue because it will bring a change in my life. I'm, I'm going for an inner transformation. So the mind will minimize its pressure of reaction. That is endurance. So after the endurance, you will recognize that oh, it's a joy of doing. What is the joy of doing? I say you to do it for five minutes. You will. You are ready to do it for ten minutes. And when you do it by yourself, you see that oh, I can extend this practice. Continue breathing, quick and short breath into the rib case, through the nostrils, dropping Om Shanti inside the forehead in the space, in the stillness of the body. That is going to help you raise your awareness, my friends.
continue doing it. <clears throat> Continue breathing, quick and short breath through both the nostrils. Om Shanti continues deep inside you, forehead and You will experience the changes in your sensation, and they are good. You need not worry about it. We are already safe because we are doing just quick and short breath through both the nostrils consciously. Consciously breathing with the mind tuned inside, dropping Om Shanti in the stillness in the body. Not only is a perfect pranayama, but it also is a process of pratyahara, goal, purification of the mind. Continue. Resistance, endurance, joy of doing, and the time, let the time come. It will become the joy of being. Do not stop in the middle, even if you stop. That is a resistance of the mind. And then resistance is there. You have to apply endurance to the intellect. And then you keep breathing, continue breathing.
Continue breathing. <clears throat> Let us complete for nine minutes today. And now stop it. What I used to say after that, pay attention to the flow of the breath. That is one thing, obviously. Continue to pay attention on the flow of the breath and check the state of the mind. Is it tuned inside? It is not at all concerned or any object of the senses in the world outside. Can we say we are already in the state of experiencing Pratyahara? I did not talk about the Pratyahara in the beginning, but now I'm adding that understanding here. So your mind is not running anywhere. It is tuned inside. You find a sense of the calmness that we achieve through the breathing. Can we achieve it through the conscious thinking, recognition? That will become the pratyahara without pranayama. Not very difficult. So you are looking into that state of awareness. Now in that state of awareness, we introduce another breathing which deepens the practice is known as the Nyasa. Start breathing deep, silent and slow. <clears throat> Body is the car. Mind, you are breathing deep, silent and slow. Breath is the, you can say the engine. And as you inhale, Move the mind from the top center of the head, moving down into the spine, reaching to the tailbone while singing mentally, Om Shanti. And as you exhale, continue singing Om Shanti, moving the mind in the spine, rising up from the tailbone to the top center of the head. So you see that the body has a sense of stillness, the breathing deep, silent and slow. The mind is sitting there, driving the car. And where is this Om Shanti? Om Shanti is the master. By this, we, we are breaking that uh, unconscious, deep-rooted connection with the different objects of the world outside. So there, the moment they are in front of us, or we imagine, the mind starts running after them. And it brings us, it makes us unconscious, ignorance, delusion takes over, our TT takes over, and ultimately the mind goes back to the same lifestyle or cycle of suffering, pain, pleasure. We have to break this. This is one of the many steps can break it. Breath is deep, silent and slow. Body is still. 
mind is instead of mind that is subconsciously habitually engaged in the objects of the world outside just by default it's a nature so where we are bringing the mind we say mind don't go there just move it into the spine and depend on um, shanti in the beginning yes we have to do this we have to give food inside ourselves inside the mind and after some time we need not to give any food uh, we just consciously we can withdraw it And now return to the mind looking deep inside the heart in the cave of your heart. Visualize the triangle of any color. Why I use the word any color? Mind picks up the color subconsciously you like. And it's okay. It's a part of the journey. If you let a triangle pointing upward and you move your mind on the triangle with Om Shanti, this time you are dropping Om Shanti. You are not chanting mentally long. Depending on the size of the triangle, you look at it, Om Shanti, second side Om Shanti, third side Om Shanti, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Dropping Om Shanti. And once you find there is a sink, and then once you find, oh, there is almost a sink, no other disturbances in that moment, push the mind with Om deep inside the cave of your heart, mind seemingly stops, shanti and absorption. So every movement is conscious movement. It is not subconscious, unconscious, habitual, in, impulsive. That is where the ignorance comes. And that is how you raise your awareness. And once you said Om Shanti, after that you are just being. Is it a joy of being? That is a great step forward. Or is the joy of doing returns? Still it is a joy, but the joy of doing returns, it's okay.
I'm with you. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti Shanti Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your Buddha palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms, know your experiences. Bring the hands down. Share your experiences. How are you, David and Jerry? Good morning. Thank you. Uh, for me, the lesson was very fascinating. The the uh, the term "the world has no problems" became my thesis for the entire meditation, and I I started analyzing and contemplating it. And if the world has no problems then the problems that we perceive there are only perceived in our minds, collective minds. And so if we just get to the bottom of that or get to the true self of that, there are no problems. Beautiful. Beautifully said. Yes, the word as such has no problem when I see through the eyes of wisdom. When I see through the eyes of ignorance and delusion, ah, the word always has a problem. Beautifully said. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good. Thank you. The meditation was really um, 
spacious and timeless. Uh, went by fast. I um, I like the tuning in, um, living tuned in, um, and really thinking about. I like to equate that to tuning into a radio station, which I guess we don't really have to do anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dating myself, but when you get rid of all the static, and so when we're tuned in, we never have. There's no static. And it's kind of similar to what David's saying. There's no problems, um, but everything's constantly changing. It's not a problem. It just is. Beautifully, that is what I said. I tune into my master's presence to teach you all. So that is also the tuning in. So in that tuning, you don't have any preferences. You don't have any prejudices. You don't have the envy. You don't have the reaction. And that helps you to evolve. Yes, you can use the tuning in in a different ways. And this is one of the best ways you did it. Jerry, how, how are you, Brandy? Good, thank you. Um, my experience was similar in that I focused on tuning the mind inward so that the peace could experience the peace without any problems from the mind. You know, so as long as the mind's inside and quiet, then, you know, the, the peace that's beyond it um, is able to, to yeah. be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it always is, but it's, it's not clouded. It's not messed up. Yes, yes. And when we tune in outside, when we tune it outside, we have many objects, we have many people, we have many relationships. It means the food for the senses, food for the mind are many. And they are associated with the duality and a conflict and attachment and detachment. So we have an option. And that is where the pratyahara comes in. Beautifully said. How are you, Dennis? Thank you. The meditation was comfortable. Breathing was equal. There were no disturbances. And mind was tuned inside. And was ready to continue for a longer period. Thank you. Yes. You all talked about, beautifully said, you all talked about that it is tuned. Now ask yourself during this week that can the mind be tuned inside all the time, 24 by 7. And if it is possible, see what happens. It is not possible, but I remind myself, oh no, let me tune it inside. Beautifully said, Dennis, thank you. And how are you? Samit. So meditation was really good. And uh, now what happens in old days, uh, whenever I get time, uh, my mind automatically feels like going inside. Means it loves to go inside. Because it is it tuned wants inside. To come inside. Beautiful. It feels inside. like going inside. Yes. Yes. So now well, we we can solve this issue. Sometimes we say mind is tuned inside. How can I do all my activities outside? All these activities will happen. We are aware of it. We are constantly aware of the world in which we live. But now we are not living in the world with association, with attachment, with clinging. And that is what we say. The, the mind is naturally tuned inside. Beautifully said, Samir. How are you, Christina? Thank you. Um, during the meditation, I felt like the consciousness almost took over. It felt effortless. And I was sensing how different it was from when I first joined the group. And it felt like I could stay in that state forever. Yeah. Staying in that state forever. Obviously, that is also the result of tuning in. And it becomes so natural, effortless. 
I have to make an effort if the mind has to go through the sense organs outside picking up an object, picking up some properties and the qualities of it. And for the basic necessity in our life, this is done by the impulsive and the instinctive mind. I need not to worry about it. Are you getting it, what I'm using? This is done by the instinctive and instinctive mind. So here is a door in my room. So I need not to think of it. Basic needs, I have to go through the door, not through the wall. Snake comes, you know, instinctive. So we, we spend too much of time, too much of effort in tuning outside. There is no tuning outside. Understand this, that there cannot be any tuning outside. It has to come from within. When you are already tuned in harmony inside, you will see the harmony outside. How are you ever? Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, practice was good. It was like uh, resting the mind in awareness. It was purely calm. That's an, a beautiful uh, expression. You're resting. Uh, what did you say? Resting the mind in awareness. Yes, resting the mind in awareness. Resting the mind in objects. Resting the mind in sensuality, resting the mind in awareness. Compare this. Uh, it makes you very easy. Ah, this is a beautiful way of you all have started sharing. Means you have started contemplating and reflecting and progressing. That is all for today. We'll meet again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.